Hi there everyone. Sooner or later everybody that shows records on YouTube puts up their Zeppelin album so today's the day I'm going to do it and uh, I'll do some editorializing while I do this too because I have very mixed feelings about Led Zipper. Um, this is their first album. I bought this in 1970. It was actually the second Zeppelin album that I bought. This is my original copy and it's, it's in excellent condition. It's got the original red Atlantic label. Led Zeppelin II. This is the first Zeppelin album I purchased. I bought it on December the 26th, 1969 on the Boxing Day sale after Christmas. The same sale I bought this. I bought um, In the God of Vida and I think I bought Best of Cream the same day. It's my original copy. Great album. This is a sealed copy of the album from the late 80s that I picked up at a yard sale a few years ago. Why someone would buy a Zeppelin album and never open it, I don't know. But uh, it was $12.98. The original price sticker from the store is still on here. It also it has the, the renumbered coding series. It's 19 KSD 19127. Led Zeppelin 3. I bought this late in 1970. Probably just after it was released. It has that famous cover that goes around. Got the original red label, and this is the last Zeppelin album, I think, to be released with the original red Atlantic label on it. There's a lot of acoustic tracks on here. I, I like the album, but it wasn't totally well received at the time. A lot of people didn't like the acoustic tracks. 1971, we have Stair uh, the Led Zeppelin IV with Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, Rock and Roll. I think this album is a little bit uneven. And uh, but this is my original copy. Then we go to 1973. We have Houses of the Holy. Probably my least favorite Led Zeppelin album. I think it's a pretty horrendous album, actually. And uh, I won't be popular for saying for saying that. But Dear Maker is one of the worst songs I think I've ever heard. Robert Plant's vocals on this album are terrible. I think he, at this point, it was like he was burning out. He was losing his voice. And I've never liked him as a singer ever since this album. It's very weak, in my opinion. And good thing, in the end of 73, I started working in the record business, so I never had to pay full price for another Led Zeppelin album after that. Physical Graffiti, 19, I think it was 1970, end of 74, started 75. It's my original copy. This could have been an excellent single album, but they made a double album, and it's uh, it would have been a great single album. Presence, nice hypnosis cover. It's it sounds like a rushed job to listen to, a lot of riffing about, but um, not a lot of lasting value in this album. The song remains the same, which is the live concert uh, double album. Wasn't that huge a seller, really. Led Zeppelin in through the outdoor with the uh, the bag cover. In Canada, they just slapped a We Have Music of Canada sticker on top of the bag. And some people don't know that the inside the cover on the inside, it comes in different variations. Led Zeppelin Coda. Then we have The Firm, which isn't really Led Zeppelin. It's Jimmy Page and Paul Rogers, but uh, it should have been better. The Firm second album. Jimmy Page Outrider, which is his solo album from the late 80s. Although uh, I think um, Robert Plant's on one track on this, and the great singer Chris Farlow is on, I think, two or three tracks on this album as well. I don't own any records by Robert Plant because I can't stand him, frankly. Books. The Led Zeppelin Biography, Richie York. This is the first really good. Led Zeppelin biography. I think it came out around 1976. Richie York worked out. He was Australian, I think, but he worked out of Toronto. 
Hammer of the Gods, the Led Zeppelin Saga by Stephen Davis, and I think this one's still in print. Stairway to Heaven, Uncensored, Richard Cole, who is the road manager, and he just, I think he describes all of the, uh, the shenanigans that they were getting into during those 70s touring years. And there are a lot of Led Zeppelin books and biographies and things, but I'm not the, the biggest fan. They could have, if they had a quit after, uh, after four, I'd be happy. Guitar Boogie, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. I just thought I'd show you this one because it's a bunch of tracks from the 60s, blues tracks that uh, they played together on. You know, the three great guitar heroes of the 60s. And, uh, you know, you could add a fourth, Pete Townsend, really. I think Pete Townsend is a, as good or a better guitar player than Clapton, Beck, and Page. But this leads into my next video. Thanks for watching.